So um, thank you, Cathy, for coming and sharing what you're doing with in schools uh, using Out of the Box. Do you want to just start by just giving us an introduction to yourself and what you're doing? Uh, my name's Deacon Cathy Hayes. I'm a deacon in the Methodist Church and my current role includes being chaplain to a primary school in Lancashire in quite a um, socially deprived area. Mm. Thank you. And, and how are you how are you offering out of the box to the school? Uh, well, initially, as part of the original out of the box trial, I um, told the stories there were I think there were only six stories at that time um to groups or to whole classes to see how they would react and all the children actually loved them actually so I told the story of the donkey uh, the monster um oh the idea and probably a few others um and sometimes with other staff there sometimes just me and a group of children and then depending on whether it was a group or a class allowed the children to play with the material afterwards and noting how they reacted. And I have to say, they all really enjoyed the material. They enjoy the way it sounds, the, the feel of it. They enjoy the stories. And they're very intrigued by the box and getting everything out. And all the children love putting everything away as well. They love the feel of it all and the teachers um, and Anybody who sees it enjoys it as well. So it's been really helpful. Now, since then, I have adapted the use of out of the books um, for my own work, which is more sharing of Bible stories, following up what um, we do in collective worship. Um, so I've used some, some stories, but adapted them. So there's a story, the mustard seed, which comes from a parable anyway. And I've linked that a bit more into um, how it is told in the Bible. And um, uh, we followed on from that. And then I've used that to tell other stories. For instance, recently I told the story of Zacchaeus using a similar idea, building up the tree. Uh, and I've told a story of Jesus on the beach and the fishermen not being able to catch any fish. And then Jesus instructs them to catch the fish. And all sorts of things I found I can use the material to tell so that's been really helpful as well fabulous so you've been creating your own stories to tell the biblical narrative yeah yeah and yeah. the children then make up their own stories which can be about absolutely anything that comes <laughs> into their head <laughs> using the material afterwards <laughs> excellent great do you want to um to, to take us through maybe i know I've, you've sent me some photos of some some of the the responses to the children that we can share in a minute and maybe to talk through what happened with those would that be yes would that, that be all right great um, there was one uh the one that where they went on to do the storm i can't remember what the story was that i started okay. with for that shall i shall i pause and then just i'll share screen with those photos and then you can uh, it'll remind you of what happened so i'm just going to share and um, the photos that you that you uh, took uh, nearly a year ago now uh, of that of what was happening so let me just share my screen and then uh, maybe could chat through what happened there oh so this is a, a year two class so there a this was in october so probably still only about six of these children and I actually told them the story of the mustard seed. Um, the theme uh, for the school for our collective worship and storytelling at that time was service. So I thought the mustard seed would be a good story to link into how small acts can um, have big effects because obviously the small seed grows into the huge tree and has a lot of impact on everybody. Um, so I told the story and we thought about what it meant. And then I invited the children to tell their own story and taking it in turns, giving each other a chance to join in. This was a group of about six children. And their story was incredible. In class, they had been um, working on a project about um, environmental disasters and the impact that humans have on the environment. And that ended up coming into their story. To start with, they decided to, um, to have a, a boy swimming. Nothing to do with the mustard seed, but I think they liked the 
the sea, the, the watery pieces of felt. So they made a sea, they had a boy swimming and the boy got into trouble. And they just picked up this story from each other and kept developing it. So then somebody rescues the boy and then he was covered in blankets. So you can see the figures there with the yellow, that's the blankets. And then they built a shelter to keep them warm. Uh, but then elements of this disaster story starts to come in. They found the, the pieces which were often used as clouds, sort of gray pieces, and put them in the water and started saying that there was oil in the water. And then uh, other things, the, the red felt came in, that was more pollution. And so the story went on until eventually absolutely every single piece came out onto the cloth. And they talked about how the effects of the actions of the people had created this huge storm and flood and everything flooded into the water. And it was just an amazing scene. You can see in the last one there, it's a complete scene of devastation. And it was just so um, insightful, for those children, because that is exactly the scene that we see, isn't it, on our television sometimes when you mm. have these terrible floods. Uh, and this is six-year-olds expressing how, how it is, uh, whether they've seen pictures like that or and they're trying to make sense of it. But I just found that amazing, actually, and really quite moving to look at. Mm. And just entirely their own thing and feeding off each other. And then they, we, so we looked at that scene for a while and thought about it and wondered about it. And then they very carefully and orderly put everything back away into all the right places and all, all took their own task in doing that. Um, I think at the time I often don't realise how much is going on, but looking back a year later, I find it amazing actually to think um, of what did come out of that and afterwards I asked them to do a drawing um, they could draw whatever they liked so long as it linked in in some way to service because that's where we started that was our theme and um, really in order to have some kind of evidence on the wall <laughs> it's good to have a picture or something and it was amazing because after all of that storytelling they went off, they sat in complete silence, not with me saying you must sit in silence, they just went off absolutely, completely bound up in their own thoughts and concentration and drew completely different things. So one drew her mum helping a homeless person on the street. One drew himself helping his mum with washing. One uh, drew a rainbow across the page and underneath was another story that we'd explored previously of Jesus healing a leper. Uh, one drew themselves on the canal because we live right by the Leeds Liverpool Canal uh, and going out to feed the ducks uh, but a fence being there in order to prevent them from falling in and uh, so they were helping but keeping safe. And I think they were thinking about the fact that we'd have this water and this disaster. And they were just really, really happy with everything that they'd done. Now, if I'd just gone in the classroom and said, can you draw me some pictures about service? I probably would have got nowhere and they wouldn't have really had that same imaginative spark. And I just, even now looking back, I find it amazing that this whole process went through this completely seemingly unconnected story from where we'd started ended up with all this sort of process of thought and outcome and we all went away very happy and content mm. thank you so much wow I think that just speaks for itself I'm not going to add anything to what you said thank you Kathy that's well, great thank you I there I know you've sent me uh, some photos of, an, of another time do, do you want to take us through that and I'll just get those uh, yes, up as well. Fine. Wonderful. Okay. So Kathy, you've got another um, story to, to share with us about how you've used um, out of the box. Uh, so if I share the screen and then if you wouldn't mind just talking us through this too. Uh, here we go. Okay. So this is an occasion with um, four year six girls. It, it's just 
uh, it just happened to be girls. It wasn't, I didn't particularly choose girls, but they were the ones who were available. Um, they're in their PE kit because they were going to go to PE. But, um, and they liked PE, they weren't avoiding PE, but they were very happy to come and do a story because I had told them the whole class of year six, the story of the idea the day before. And these four girls had been very engaged. And when the chance of another story came up, they shot their hands up and were very glad to come out and do this with me. So I actually told them the monster story and then uh, which they were very engaged with and then afterwards I said right now you can use the material and you tell me a story uh, but their story was very much inspired by the um, idea which they heard the day before so it started out um, and before I tell you what the story was just uh, explain how they organized themselves which was totally just their way they had one girl told the story one place the material very carefully um, one sort of was on the edge of adding and one was more watching but then adding ideas as they went so that was very interesting the way that they they did that amongst themselves so their story was that a person had an idea uh, and was trapped uh, the idea was trapped in this box that they'd um, built and other people didn't like the idea so they took the idea to the beach and they hid it away. Uh, but then people started to get interested. So they took the idea out and it got bigger. So this is slightly based on the idea as it is the idea story, but then they developed it themselves. And more and more people liked it. Even the donkey liked it. They were dying to bring the donkey into the story. <laughs> so they put the idea on the donkey and then they took the idea across the desert so more and more people could know the idea. And then they started bringing in extra things. So they had an, the acorn on the plate, which was food for the builders as they were building the box. And sticks went in the bucket and they were the building materials. And then uh, one, yes, one girl was telling the story while another really enjoyed handling the, the idea, um, which is a, a sort of string, of, a feathery string. And um, yes, it just grew and grew and they just interacted so well, these girls. And then after they finished telling their story, they stood back and looked at it and were very happy with it all. And then very, very carefully and respectfully, they put everything away. See how beautifully they're um, rolling up the cloth at the end and then a picture of them standing there really proud of the box yeah. when they packing it away. And this was all new. I mean, I'd only brought, the, the box in school the day before so they were so excited to be part of this and then afterwards um I asked them how they'd found the experience and so year six I thought well we'll do a bit of reflection on it and um they really enjoyed the fact that it'd be more calming than you know a normal year six lesson which is pretty intense and often uh, aimed towards improving your maths English and so on they were just they felt very calm and enjoyed interacting together. Uh, they really liked the way that the materials were all natural. There's no plastic. It, it just felt, that in itself, I think, felt um, calming and attractive to them. Uh, they liked the sound that the pieces make as they move around. Um, and yes, I think that's all they really said, but, um, I did ask them again at the end if they'd minded that they'd missed PE um, and they didn't at all and actually they were they would have quite happily stayed there and done another story again if I'd let them but I said they needed to go to PE. <laughs> there we are. Oh thank you thank you very much again it, it, it that speaks for That's itself perfect. but I think what's what's I'm really picking up from that is that the out-of-the-box approach which is about dialogue it's about being in community relationships it's about sharing ideas respect listening all of that was just happening amongst those those children very naturally as they played yeah it's a lovely way to encourage interaction um when you let them play with the material and i think it is really good for year sixes who are, are quite often under quite a lot of pressure in our schools now so um it did give them a lovely release it, um, yeah, in a, and in a calm kind of a way. So, mm, that was good. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Cathy. Is, 
that that's just such so many gems there that you've shared with your your work with children is there anything else before we finish that that you wanted to say uh well as a, a chaplain i've used materials quite a lot to tell bible stories as well and i found that really helpful um because you know in a way i'm playing with them uh and i've found there's plenty of pieces that you can adapt in order to tell stories and the children enjoy joining in with that and then you you make surprises for yourself so recently i was building a little fire using the blocks and using the red piece of felt to make the flames this was part of the story of jesus on the beach a post easter story cooking the fish and um the children suddenly just oh you've made a heart because the two of the red pieces that were the flames had just <laughs> by themselves made a heart shape and the fact that there was love coming out of this fire that Jesus had built was incredible and the, the children really picked up on that so yeah it, it's I do find the materials really helpful and open in that way and I've used them for myself as well for my own reflection mm -hmm. um, so thank you for out of the box oh thank you so much lovely thank you so much for sharing some of what you're doing that was really really a pleasure to listen to thank you <laughs>